Hi guys, welcome back again to Push Talk Podcast with your push strategist, myself, Assis to say. This episode, we are highlighting a dynamic woman breaking barriers on the continent of Africa, Miss Jafine Bates. I am so delighted to have you guys get to know her and how she is doing this. But before that, I want to give a brief introduction so you know who you're listening to. Jafine wears many hats, namely a mom, a wife, and a serial entrepreneur. Jafine is a Minnesota native, but has lived in Liberia for the last 12 years, Liberia, West Africa. Jafine's parents are both originally from Liberia, so she has always been intrigued from about the small African country that would, she would always hear her parents talk about. So when the opportunity presented itself, she made the move and the rest is history. Professionally, Jafine is a project manager and a management consultant. She has worked with clients ranging from large public institutions to small businesses and various sectors, managing wide array of projects. Over the last couple of years, Jafine decided to flex her entrepreneurship muscle, yes, and transition from a traditional nine to five and become a small business owner. Since then, Jafine has successfully launched three, not one, not two, but three businesses, a consulting firm, a flower shop, and a project management company, all based in Liberia, West Africa. Jafine loves to create, nurture, and grow, whether it's people, business, or things. And she gets great joy in seeing something she started flourish. And that's one of the main reasons she lives in Liberia, a country full of growth opportunities. So welcome, Jafine. Let's get to know her, guys. And if this is your first time joining us on Push Talk Podcast, make sure you stop right now. Go and hit the notification bell on YouTube and follow us so you don't miss out on great episodes, as well as listen to us on our podcast, Apple Podcasts. But enough about us. Let's get going to learn more about Jafine. Hi, guys. Again, welcome. Welcome to Push Talk Podcast. As you heard, we have the extraordinary, amazing Jafine Bates with us. Welcome, Jafine. Hey, how are you? I am great. I'm so excited to have you. I mean, that introduction speaks for itself. You are a woman that's breaking barriers in so many different ways. And I just love it. You're an inspiration to me as somebody who left here went to Africa, created your own, and you're so successful, beautiful family, beautiful life. But we want to hear the nitty gritty. We know (laughs) Nina Braun (laughs) also has the challenges, but it's so important too. So I know we only have 15 minutes for this episode, so I want to jump right in. Um, And then we'll share a little bit about where people can find you and everything. But before I jump in again, as a reminder, you guys, if you have not already subscribed to us on YouTube, Push Talk Podcast, our Apple Podcast, Push Talk Podcast, we are here to give you motivational messages to push you towards your purpose. So I had to add that little, um, you know, marketing thing. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get started, Jafine. So I want to um, jump into, you know, what made you decide that it was time to leave this land of the um Dreams, you know, money growing on trees, America, like how the everybody. The land of milk and honey. The I land of milk you. and honey. Oh, okay. Um, what made you say, you know, as a and you were born here, like me, me and Jafine know each other from young. Yeah. We used to get in a little bit of trouble, you know. Minnesota girls. Yep. Yes, thinking we were cute, Juneteenth and all that stuff. You remember those days, Jafine? Crystal Frolics. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Having to borrow Helen's car, just. Oh, let me not get yeah. into all of our personal life story. <laughs> but 
honestly speaking, like we grew up in Minnesota here, you know, and you left, you said, I want to do something different. And I, mm-hmm. the timing that you did it was when most people weren't doing it yet. So I want to, um, you to talk about what made you decide that it was time to say, I'm leaving America. I'm going back to where my parents came from and wanting to create something of my own for my family. What, what made you decide it was time for that? Um, I just felt like I've, I've always been a person who's like a risk taker. And mm-hmm. at the time, my mother lived in Liberia already. She had been here for a while and, you know, she had businesses and stuff. And she's always been behind me to just come and see, and, you know, I used to visit and stuff like that. But she wanted me to come help her run her business. And mm-hmm. it just got to a time where things in my life were like shifting, like where I was living, the lease was ending. I got laid off um, from a job. Mm, mm. My kids were still really young. So it would have been, it's easier to, you know, move with younger kids. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, you know, now that I don't really have anything tying me, let me just go and see. And if I don't like it, I can always come back. So I went, but then I didn't come back. (laughs) (laughs) You said, oh no. And now, yeah. and, and you didn't come back. Why? What was it that attracted you um, from here? I mean, you were in a great career. I'm sure I know you got laid off, but there was probably so much opportunity to go into mm-hmm. another uh, another role. What made you say, I'm not coming back to America and um, being in Liberia is where I want to stay? It was a couple of different things, but I think the most important thing was like the quality of life was better here. It's not as stressful and you know at the time i was a single mom i had two young kids so i had a lot of support here mm-hmm. as well versus um being in america and mm-hmm. then also too i feel that um being an african woman in africa i felt more it, I, like i felt like i belong here like i felt mm-hmm. like you know i didn't have that like oh i don't belong or i'm not wanted and mm-hmm. i feel like the path the growth in your career is much faster wow. um, in Africa than it would have been like in America. Like if I was in America right now, I don't believe that I'd be at the level of my career I am now. I would probably mm-hmm. be at like some mid-level management or something mm-hmm. like that. So yeah, so those, you know, and then I also met my husband here. So, oh, <laughs> so yeah, you know, so a few different things, but those are the primary ones. Wow. You know, you said several things that really hit home, especially knowing what America's going through right now with race relations, like the Mm -hmm. fact of belonging. And I think a lot of us here don't ever feel 100 percent, especially those in, you know, of color that we all we belong. You know, it's it's always hard. And then don't let it be, you know, an immigrant or a foreign born person as that or even first generation like myself still trying to feel like we belong or creating a space for ourselves. We can have mm-hmm. all the, um, you know, degrees, all of what the world would say you have it, but still having to deal with some form of oppression or just feeling like, man, I could never reach the mark in my career that I deserve. And working with so many um, people of color, I, I see it all the time and I've experienced myself. So I just love hearing that you felt like you belong there. Um, yeah, and and, and, and also the other piece that really stuck to me is just how you catapulted in your career and in your business. Um, mm-hmm. So many of us, it's comfort, you know, I feel like being here and knowing, but you took a risk and look at what a risk has um, opened up for you. So that's just yeah, extraordinary. really, really mm-hmm. extraordinary. And now share a little bit of some of the challenges that you may have went through with that transition. I will say the the reception, everything's good. It's not cutting out, you know. Africa, come on, yeah, like, yeah y'all we, stepping we out. We definitely come a long way. It wasn't like this in 2009 when I yeah. I came here. Mm-hmm. Um, the big challenge when I first came was connectivity because I was even mm-hmm. doing my master's program online. Oh wow! Um, when I first came, so that was a huge challenge, but we mm-hmm. made huge strides. Um, you know, it was pretty, like, I don't want to glorify it because this is not the place for everybody. Um, but it was a pretty easy transition for me because I came here quite often um, mm-hmm. before I actually moved here. And then also growing up, like, I, you know, I grew up in Minnesota, but I was very um, infused into the Liberian community. 
Yeah. So they have like culture shock, you know? Oh, okay, okay, okay. And um, yeah, I mean, other than that, like the transition was good. Like now I had nannies to help me. Well, <laughs> you know, <girl>. what happened? <laughs> you know, I didn't have to work around the clock. You know, yeah, it's just, yeah. like I said, the quality of life was better. There was there was there were challenges, but nothing that I would even say would have made me even second guess my decision to move. Wow, wow. Mm-hmm. You you're tempting me, you know. I know we talked about this, Jafine, mm-hmm. that I definitely want to transition one day, but you're making me want to come sooner because trust me, the nanny part, the support part, you know, is huge, yes. you know. Um mm-hmm. and I think do you find Liberia is a place or a country that's good for maybe um, not necessarily somebody who's first generation, but, you know, somebody who's born in a, you know, don't have any connection to Africa and say, I want to change. I want to get to know my culture, especially for African-Americans here. Do you find it's a good country to start in? And why would you mm-hmm. say that's the case? I think Liberia is a good country because one, Liberia is very friendly and they're very Mm -hmm. open um, to people from the diaspora as Mm -hmm. compared to other countries. Like it's Mm -hmm. easy to come and live and work in Mm -hmm. Liberia freely, whereas, you know, other places, they're a lot more strict, you know, Mm -hmm. and they favor their citizens first, which which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but yeah, it's different. (laughs) Um, and then also Liberia, you know, with our connection to America, we're, we're very westernized mm-hmm. as a country. So it's easier for people to integrate. Like we use the U.S. dollars. We speak mm-hmm. English primarily. Um, yeah. A lot of yeah. our food is very similar to like Southern food, you yeah. know, so it's, it's easy to assimilate into the culture yeah. um, in Liberia, I would say. Wow. And financially for somebody bringing U.S. Um, income and you know, how is that transition? Is it something that they have to really prepare hard for or? Um, well, one thing I would say is that Liberia is expensive um, mm-hmm. to, uh, you know, maintain like the yeah. lifestyle that you would have had in America. Mm-hmm. But um, people like the good jobs here, you get paid in US dollars, which is good. Yeah, so true. even if you still have bills and stuff back home, you don't have to worry about, um, exchange rates and all that stuff yeah, yeah. and then the banks the connection is so good like now i can transfer money to the u.s is there the same day wow. you know all that stuff so it's it's easier it's much yeah. easier um but like things cost a lot <laughs> yeah like electricity is expensive data is expensive but they also have good jobs that pay really well um for wow. expat so wow now i want to have housing and all that stuff Oh, I love it. And let me tell you, we I'm, I'm trying to push Jafine to be a um, influencer to help our people from the diaspora come back. So I'm going to be pushing you on that, Jafine. <laughs> but in the, I want to uh, transition and talk about your business. Like, mm-hmm. okay, so you went there. Did you have a business before? What what type of business do you have now? How has the success been in that? And, and tell us a little bit more because you're doing some great things over there. Um, I didn't, when I came, I didn't have a business. Like I said, my family, my mother owns a business mm-hmm. on water factory. So I came and I managed that for a little bit, but mm-hmm. it's not really what I wanted to do. You know, just yeah. making my contribution to a family business. Yeah. Then I started doing a lot of consulting work independently, which mm-hmm. opened up the gateway for like a lot of um, different opportunities. Mm-hmm. So I worked for a few um, corporate entities in Liberia. And over the last two years, I just decided that I didn't want to work for anybody else anymore. <laughs> so I started um, a consulting. Yeah, <laughs> I I started a consulting firm, the Vantage Group, where it's a growth strategy firm. We work with small businesses, and then more recently, in the last year, I started a flower shop. Yes, I love it. Kind of little passion project. Yeah, yeah it's so beautiful. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. so I mean, those were going really well. Mm-hmm. Um, it it gives me joy doing yeah. it. I'm happy doing what I'm doing. I have mm-hmm. a couple of other things that I plan on launching later this year, early next year. Because, yeah. you know, in Liberia, you have to diversify the hustle. So mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. going to have a couple of different, maybe like my, my limit is like four or five different businesses. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, 
they're all they all run independently some of them don't mm. require a lot of me it's just you know residual income so wow yeah i mean that's what we do okay. here it's, just, it's like a blank canvas there's so much that's not in liberia so it's so mm -hmm. easy to just bring things that people take for granted in america and it's like a gold mine you can make so much money here with it and that's it girl you hit the nail on the head i don't even have to ask my other question i had but the follow-up is you were able to do what you love and still generate so much. Of course, mm -hmm. you are strategists. You have a, you know, you know how to think strategically when it comes to planning a business. So you have those foundations, but people can always utilize the Vantage Group for more support, you know. Um, but mm -hmm. if they come to Africa, it's, it's really, I love that it's a blank canvas where there's a lot of things that are untapped. There's a lot of things that you went in there and you're breaking barriers to bring. I love that you brought something like a, you know, somewhat of a luxury, and I'm sure it has affordability for the population, a flower shop, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and beautiful work. Um, we're going to put your link up or you got to tell us it so we can check it out. But it's just you're creating something where you're letting Africa get exposure. Not that they didn't have exposure, but you're even you're, you're bringing a little bit for those who are expats there. And they want to get that yeah. feeling. I love, I love, I love it. And um, I guess um, for, I want you to end off just talking just directly to us first generation people or even us that are not. And they're like, I want to come. Why is it important to come back to, to come to Africa for a first time or just come back and give back knowing all we're seeing happening in Africa and the help it needs. Just give us your elevator pitch on that. <laughs> Um, I want to come back, even if not to live, but like this is where you're from. These are your roots. This is your history. This is your culture. It's important to know um, where you came from. Yeah. It's important to understand how a lot of what you experience and what you see in America today, where it originated from, you know, when it comes to um, Black culture. I would also encourage people to come because like I said, uh, Africa, especially um, the ECOWAS region where Liberia is, is a blank canvas. There's so mm -hmm. many things that have not been done. There's so many opportunities for people to take advantage of. And mm -hmm. it's just a shame to see foreign, foreigners like from Lebanon, from India, from China coming here and tapping into resources that should be for us. Yes, yes, it's so true. And so ended so perfectly as a strategist herself. So, <laughs> from one strategist to another, I'm giving you a thumbs up on that. And you really sold me. I'm bringing my butt to Africa, okay? You oh, know, I've, you're been, welcome. I've been there a few times. I attempted some businesses and now I'm ready to really go big. And I want everybody, we're not coming there to just take from the economy. You're pouring into it. And that's what you're doing by creating these um these areas of, you know, exposure and these businesses you're doing, you're breaking barriers there. I'm so proud of you and Philomena Thank for what you. you're doing with the Vantage Group, for your flower mm -hmm. business. Now tell us, okay, where could we find you? What's next? Um, where could we find you? Where could we connect with you? And I'm going to put your social media up right now so you guys can follow her on social media. Yes, um, I'm at Jaffine on yes. social media. That's the best way to um, just keep up with what's going on or even to contact me directly. And also the flower pot is my yes. business. So if you have people in Liberia, you can order online and send them flowers as yes. well. So I love follow that. us, follow me at Jafina, also follow the flower pot.lib. Oh, I love it. Thank you, Jafine. We're going to have you back. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. trying to start this pep rally, This hopefully before the end of the year. So we would love to have you as a speaker. Come share your wealth with women and with men and just help us to reach our purpose beyond just where we're comfortable. So we're already yeah. over. We got to get off because I'm 15 minutes only. Yes. But you guys, if you want to <laughs> listen to more of great, great content like this, follow us again. Push Push Talk Podcast on Apple Podcast and on YouTube. Thank you, Jafine, for your time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.